Yo, what's going on people? It's your boy Ulogic and I don't know the script for this video yet, so let me look at that. Today what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be taking a look at the Calathea plant, a favorite for many, many, many indoor gardeners. And I happen to have mine right here. This Calathea is known as the Peacock Calathea. I haven't owned her for very long. It's only been about three months, but she has been sending me a lot of new growth and I've just been really happy with the overall vibe and the overall energy that this plant gives off so i've been loving her a lot and one of the immediate things that you're going to notice about this plant is a really distinctive foliage the calathea is really well known for its really artsy fartsy looking foliage and the designs that it has on its leaves which are just really awesome and mesmerizing if you look at them like i feel like i'm showing it to you guys right now and all you're looking at is a plant. You're not even looking at me anymore. I mean, which is probably true all the time, but it doesn't matter. And that's just an amazing element of nature. The fact that it can provide these really beautiful and distinct art all on its own is just really incredible. And it adds to my love for this plant. Now, one really important thing that you need to know about this plant is that it is mistakenly referred to as the prayer plant. And it's for a reason. This plant will exhibit this really awesome habit of opening and closing throughout the day and the night. And so I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys a really cool time lapse of what that looks like. And while that's going on, what I will say is that while this plant is commonly referred to as a prayer plant or the prayer plant, the true prayer plant is going to be the Maranta, which is a really close relative of the Calathea existing within the same family, which is the reason why they exhibit such similar foliage as well as such similar habits when it comes to the opening and closing mechanisms of the plant. In fact, I actually have a prayer plant or a Maranta in hand for you guys to get a bit of a comparison between the two. And one of the easiest ways to distinguish between the two is that the Calathea, while it matures and while it grows, is going to take on a more upwards vertical motion with respect to the growth while the Maranta plant, on the other hand, will kind of take on more of a hanging or like a trailing motion. So it'll go vertically downwards. So it's almost like two polar opposites if you think about it, but they're right in the same family with very similar techniques, very similar biological mechanisms, appearances. Both of these look really artsy. And overall, this just adds to my love for the entire family. But today, we're talking specifically about the Calathea. So let's go ahead and discuss some of the care tips when it comes to the Calathea plant. When it comes to lighting of the Calathea, the Calathea is going to prefer medium to bright indirect light. However, like many other house plants, it will actually tolerate the low light, but you will see it thriving in the medium to bright indirect light spectrum. But now that that said, let's talk about one of the common pitfalls when it comes to people owning the Calathea, and that is watering. So this plant is a little bit picky. I wouldn't call it like super sassy or super complicated or anything, but this plant is really picky when it comes to the watering. It's like, eh, I don't want that. I don't want that. I want this, but not too much of that. And it can get a little bit annoying, especially for the newer house plant owners. But after you learn about what the Calathea likes and what it doesn't like, it becomes super simple. Both the Calathea and the Maranta actually dislike tap water because tap water oftentimes contains minerals and this plant in particular is very sensitive to a lot of those minerals so what will end up happening is that if you water it using tap water well yeah it may be good the first two or three times that you water it if you continue doing this and making it a habit the plant will actually start to deteriorate and that'll often show in the form of leaves crisping up or turning yellow especially if you allow for the minerals to build up within the soil this plant hates these minerals. So what you're gonna wanna do is that you're gonna wanna provide it filtered or distilled water instead of tap water. And that's going to eliminate any of the fuss when it comes to that plant. Another thing that this plant hates is sitting in water for too long. So when it comes to the Calathea, you're gonna wanna allow for it to dry out a bit in between waterings. And what that means is that you're gonna want the top soil or the top two to three inches of soil to dry out before you water it again. So make sure that you're sticking to your finger tests like I always advocate before you water this plant to tell whether or not it really is time to water it. And then finally, on the topic of watering, if you wanna avoid the browning or the yellowing that may sometimes happen, you're gonna wanna make sure that you don't allow for this plant to dry out too much. So, like I said, it's a really picky plant, but it's not a complicated or difficult plant at all. After you know what this plant likes, you will be able to give it everything that it needs in order to send you some new shoots. And this plant in particular, 
uh, she's been sending me a lot of new shoots. And with that being said, I think that's why I want to end the video, guys. I will be making a video in the future discussing the Maranta plant, but when it comes to this plant in particular, the Calathea plant, that is really it, guys. If you have any questions concerning the Calathea plant, make sure to leave them down in the comment section below so I can get to them. If you enjoyed the video, if you found it helpful, or if you like my face, or maybe even the plant's face, make sure that you leave a thumbs up down below. And until next time, guys, peace.